Okay. Uh, great. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, I can see 26 of you are there. And yeah, great. So hi, Ankita. Hi, Hari. Abhishek, Alfaya. Hello, everyone. So let's start the session, right? So let's discuss the agenda of today's session. So the today's session is all about uh, this you for loop and do I loop. And after that, we are moving toward the project part, right? And uh, yeah, let's start our session, right? So we will take a problem statement, a good problem statement, and we will see why function is very important, okay? So we will be seeing how to use a function also in this session. So let me share my screen. <coughs> Guys, do you know what is a like how to calculate a factorial of a number and uh, or can you give an example what is a factorial of a number? Please write in the chat. Till that time, I'm sharing my screen. Okay. Sir, assignment nahi mila site pe. Uh, Rahul, I think uh, there is an assignment in the assignment link, right? Try to see from there. Correct. Okay. So here uh, factorial, okay? So basically factorial of a number, right? Factorial. So certificate is not available. Uh, you will get the certificate after this session. Okay, after this session, those who are having more than 50% of uh, attendance, they will get the certificate, right? So factorial of number guys till that time. Anyone from the audience? Yeah. So I can see. Yes. Suja is correct. Danny is correct here. And uh, if I will take one example, then if I have to five, uh, if I have to find Four factorial. So this is a symbol of factorial. This is equal to one into two into three into four. That is twenty-four will be the answer of four factorial. If I will take three factorial, it will be one into two into three. That is six will be the answer of three factorial. Right, everyone? So if you will see what we are doing in this program, we are uh, like uh, we have to start from one. Okay, this is my starting point and we have to go till n. If I have to find nth factorial, okay, n factorial, then I have to start from 1 and I have to go till n. This is the first observation that I can make. After that, what I am doing, like I am taking two number at a time, that is 1 into 2 and whatever result I am getting, that is 1 into 2 is 2. Whatever result I am getting, I am multiplying this result with the next number, that is 3. Again, whatever result I am getting from 2 into 3, 6, okay, that result I am multiplying with the next number, right? So, basically, if you will observe what we are doing, we are multiplying the result again and again, multiplying the result again and again right with the next number right everyone so i know since here i am doing some task some logic i am executing that logic again and again i have to use a loop yesterday we saw about while loop today let's uh, discuss about the for for loop okay so basically we have the for keyword after that you have the initialization statement okay so here the initialization statement will be starting from one okay what i have to do i have to achieve factorial of a number that is let's assume for five it is one into two into three into four into five right so i will start from one and i know how many times i have to execute the body of all loop i have to go till n so I will write here i less than equal to n, right? After that, i plus plus, or you can write like this, not plus plus, i is equal to 
i plus 1 right everyone this one so this one and after that this one right what i will do i have to find a factorial of a n number right and let's assume it is 5 here so it will be 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5 right so what i will do i will create a variable and uh, let's assume the variable is fact here okay fact and i will initialize the fact with one here right and after that what i will do here i will do fact is equal to fact into i right everyone and this will be my program and here i will print the factorial of a number right factorial of a number here right this one percent d and this is fact simple so if i have to dry run the code what i will do let's try to download uh, dry run the code also right this one and uh, this one here sir certificate kab aayega after the session you will get the certificate sanket okay so basically what we are doing again if i have to make a dry run table this is my initialization statement so first column is initialization one int i is equal to one this we have discussed yesterday after that i have to write the condition i is less than equal to five five let's assume the value of n is five here or let's take three okay the value of n is three here after that i have to write the updation part that is i is equal to i plus one right so what will happen first this line will get executed that is the uh, that is factorial is equal to one okay and let's assume this is my output right after that i will go to the for loop in the for loop int i is equal to one will get executed so here the value of i is what one right after that i will jump to the condition part in the condition part okay in the condition part what we have we have one less than equal to three so the condition is true the moment your condition is true you will move inside the body you will execute this line here the value of fact okay so tell me one thing guys so i have this line here right can you guys tell me here i have what i have left hand side part assignment operator right hand side part can you guys write in the chat which part will get executed first Konsa part pehle execute hoga left hand side wala part execute hoga or it is right hand side part that will get executed please write in the chat okay according to you which part will get executed first anyone from the audience okay so madhu is saying left uh, first okay suja is saying right first what about others so two of you are saying right okay left and then right uh, right 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 so guys in programming world whenever you have the assignment operator okay remember this point whenever you have the assignment operator first right hand side part will get executed and whatever result i will get from the right hand side part that result will get stored in the left hand side part everyone is clear so if i am writing like this fact is equal to 2 into 3 so first right hand side part that is this part will get executed that is 3 into 2 is what 6 so whatever result i am getting i will store that result in the left hand side part so first right hand side part and after that left hand side part hope you are able to understand this point right after that yeah okay so let's remove this one yeah this one so it is fact is equal to fact into i right so here what will happen i know the value of fact is what one into the value of i the value of i is what one so one into one is one so the result will be inside factorial variable right so let's create a variable also that is 
let's create a variable here itself right i have a variable and inside that variable one into one is what one right everyone after executing the body what will happen after executing the body i will move to the updation part right i will move to the addition part and here the addition part is what i is equal to i plus one so the previous value of i is what one one plus one is two here so i got the updated value of i after updating executing the update updation statement i will jump to the condition statement again right and here the condition is what i less than equal to n that is two less than equal to three yes it is true again the condition is true i will move inside the body again i will execute the body this time factorial value is what one okay so one and the value of i is what this time it is two so one into two will be what two so i will get two here and that two will get stored inside fact so i will update the result i will update the result and here i am getting two now right and after that again i will go to the updation part and uh, here the updation part is what i plus one that is the updated value of i is what two plus one is three here right so executed the updation statement i will move to the condition part here the condition part is what three less than equal to three again the condition is true i will move inside the body i will execute the body this time the value of factorial is what two two into the value of i is what three so two into three is what six so that six result will get stored inside factorial variable so here what i will do i will update the value of factorial so here i will get six now right after executing the body i will move to the updation part i will update the value of i that is three plus one is four here after executing the updation statement i will move to the condition part and here the condition is what four less than equal to three condition is false the moment the condition is false i will move out of the for loop because the condition is false and after that i will execute this line and i will get six on the output screen so i have done the correct code so let's try to implement this code here okay so what i will do here uh, i will take a variable let's assume the variable is n int n is equal to 5 after that uh, i will use a for loop and i will take a variable to store the answer that is int fact is equal to 1 right and after that i will first do the initialization part that is int i is equal to 1 and after that how many times i have to execute the body of the for loop here i have to execute the body of the for loop till the time i is less than equal to n right after that i will write i is equal to i plus 1 right and here i will write the logic that is fact is equal to fact into i right simple and after that what i will do i will print the value of factorial here print f and uh, now percent d because i want the data integer format and here i will write fact right so let's try to run the code and let's see whether i'm getting the correct output or not so here you can see i am getting the correct output that is 120 right everyone everyone is clear till this point yes or no please write in the chat if it is clear anyone has any doubt till this point please write in the chat yeah no so let's move to the next question okay so the next question is what i have uh, uh, okay i have n items available i have n items available and from that n items available i have to choose r items among them okay choose r items among them can you guys tell me uh, how i can do this part anyone uh, fact into fact is equal to fact into i kya hai sir uh, Rahul, yahan pooch rahe ho, ye part? Okay, so Rahul is not able to get the point, right? So Rahul, tell me, aapko factorial samajh maaya, what is a factorial? 
यस और राहुल सो बेसिकली अगर वी हैव टू फाइंड अ थ्री फैक्टोरियल सो व्हाट वी आर डूइंग राहुल वी आर डूइंग वन इंटू टू इंटू थ्री राइट सो बेसिकली इफ यू विल ऑब्जर्व दिस पॉइंट फर्स्ट वी आर मल्टीप्लाइंग द टू नंबर एंड वट एवर रिजल्ट आई एम गेटिंग फ्रॉम दैट नंबर ओके वट एवर रिजल्ट आई एम गेटिंग फ्रॉम दैट नंबर दैट इज टू वट एवर रिजल्ट आई एम गेटिंग आई एम मल्टीप्लाइंग दैट रिजल्ट विद द नेक्स्ट नंबर दैट इज थ्री right and again whatever result i will get that is 6 here okay and let's assume here i have 5 right so 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5 right so first what i will do i will take the number i will i will multiply that number with the previous result in the previous result i have 1 right so 1 into 1 is 1 whatever result i will get i will multiply that number with 2 2 into 1 2 whatever result i will get i will multiply with 3 3 into 2 6 Whatever result I am getting here, that is six into four, twenty-four, twenty-four into five, one twenty. Right, Rahul? So that I am doing here, right? Here you can see, I have created a variable factorial to store the previous result, right? This one, I have taken a variable to store the previous result here, Rahul. And after that, here I have used a for loop, and I am doing the same thing here, right? That is fact into i. to get the new result right and this process will continue till the time i is less than equal to n ah uh, yeah yeah you can do this problem with recursion also vanshika but uh, it is not uh, like if you know about recursion it is not a like this is a most uh, optimized approach okay in recursion there will be extra space okay so rahul it is clear now please write in the chat if it is clear so now the question is what i have n items available and i have to choose r items among them can you guys tell me any mathematical formula you know if uh, this is a problem statement have you ever studied about any mathematical formula for this one anyone no so guys we have a formula for this one that is n C R, anyone? N C R. Okay, great. Yeah. So we have to use yeah, correct. So we can use N C R. That is a combination one. So the formula of N C R is what? This N C R means n items are available. N items are available. From that n items, I have to choose r items among them. Right. so i can use this formula that is ncr and here the formula is what n factorial okay upon n minus r ka factorial into r ka factorial right everyone yes or no so if i will say ki hey i have five items available and i have to choose three items among them so what i will write i will write five factorial 5 minus 3 ka factorial into 3 ka factorial that will be equal to 5 ka factorial upon 2 ka factorial 3 ka factorial that will be equal to 5 into 4 okay upon 2 that is 10 the overall answer will be 10 here right everyone yes or no please write in the chat if it is clear yes so we have to find this one okay and i know how to find a factorial of a number right how to find a factorial of a number that i know so just I, what i have to do i have to take a value of n i have to take a value of r and i have to apply this formula right everyone so let's try to do that part right so what i will do here i have taken n right i will take one r also int r and uh, let's say ki r is 3 here right after that what i will do see here i have three part right in this question i have three part that is this 
फर्स्ट पार्ट एन फैक्टोरियल दिस सेकेंड पार्ट एन माइनस आर का फैक्टोरियल एंड दिस थर्ड पार्ट दैट इज आर का फैक्टोरियल राइट सो वट आई विल डू हियर या सो हियर आई विल क्रिएट अ वेरिएबल दैट इज इन फैक्टोरियल ऑफ एन आई विल क्रिएट वन मोर वेरिएबल दैट इज इन फैक्टोरियल ऑफ एन आर दैट इज एन माइनस आर and i will initialize with one i will create one more variable that is int fact of uh, r right and it is equal to one right and after that uh, here i know how to calculate factorial of a number right so what i will do yeah so first i will yeah first i will do for the this one that is int fact uh, the numerator part right that is i will calculate the factorial of n so i have already calculated the factorial of n just what i will do i will change the variable here that is fact n fact n right everyone so this is the first part i have done so now i have to calculate the second part so for calculating the second part what i will do i have to calculate for this one right okay i have to calculate for this one for this one i know i have to start from 1 and i have to go till n for factorial of n r what i have to do i have to start from 1 and i have to go till n minus r right and for factorial of r what i have to do i have to start from 1 and i have to go till r right everyone so what i will do here i have to just change the end point right so here this one so i will copy and paste this part and here i will change to n minus r right this one i have to start from 1 and i have to go till n minus r and here i will store the result inside n r right like this yes everyone similarly what i will do i will do for the third part that is r factorial so for that thing i will again copy the same code and paste the same code here and what i will do i will start from 1 and i will go till r and i will store the result inside r that is r and r after that what i will do i will apply the formula the formula is what int answer okay let's uh, store the answer in float right float answer is equal to or let's store the answer in integer itself right int answer is equal to factorial of n right divided by what we have factorial of n minus r that is factorial of n minus r into we have factorial of r right everyone so i got the answer after that i will print the answer here that is print f and uh, here i have to print the answer in integer format so percent d and answer here right so let's save the code okay let's save the code and let's see what output i am getting now so here okay i have done something wrong yeah i have done uh, this wrong right so here you can see i am getting some 360 right so here i have to follow bod mass right because why i am getting 360 here this one because we know according to bod mass rule right bod mass here division multiplication right everyone so here you can see i have factorial of n divided by factorial of r into n r into factorial of r so here we are getting the wrong result so what i have to do i have to i have to store the whole denominator like this right like this inside this so let's uh, do that part also that is i will write uh, uh this one here one bracket and let's include this one right so let's save the code and let's see now what output i am getting so now i am getting the correct output that is 10 right everyone yeah correct correct sujay sujay so everyone is clear with this question yes or no please write in the chat yes or no guys if it is clear or not anyone has any doubt in the whole code i will explain that part again no one apart from sujay anyone yes clear 
सो गाइस इफ इट इज क्लियर दोस्त हु आर सेइंग कि यस इट इज क्लियर व्हाट इज द वन थिंग यू कैन ऑब्जर्व व्हाट वी आर डूइंग लाइक वी आर डूइंग समथिंग एक्स्ट्रा हियर और लाइक दिस इज अ वेरी गुड कोड एनीवन प्लीज राइट इन द चैट और एवरीथिंग इज करेक्ट लाइक वी हैव रिटर्न द करेक्ट क्वालिटी कोड anyone can find anything uh, extra we are doing yeah what extra thing we are doing guys please write in the chat uh use recursion no 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 anshika uh, apart from recursion leave this recursion topic okay apart from that you can observe anything here anything extra we are doing or everything is uh, like uh, normal and we have written the best code possible extra board mass rule no 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 create function okay suja is correct here why suja you are saying create function please write in the chat okay so if you will observe guys here this point this thing so what we are doing here also we are calculating the factorial here also we are calculating the factorial and here also we are calculating the factorial okay and we are writing the same logic again and again right we are so writing the same logic again and again just there is a change in the end point you can see right the logic is same just we are changing the end point here everyone is getting the point so we are making the code more bulkier this is a first observation that i can make from here the second observation is it is more bulkier and uh, uh, here you can see like we have some lines of code but if you have La longer code then it is very difficult to debug right difficult to find error let's assume by chance here you have done some typing mistake right here you have done some typing mistake here so what will happen it is very difficult to find error you have to go to each and every line and see what you have done right so the code is bulkier difficult to find error the third point is what you are repeating okay you are repeating the logic again and again that is repetitive code right so there are lot of point and you are saying yes so there is a way to optimize this code right that way is what we can create a function and that function can calculate the factorial for us at the end of the day what we want we want a factorial of a number so what i will do i will create a box right here sorry sir for late but uh, project kaun sa topic ka hai uh, uh it is like a, i think uh, this thing is more important than project okay so first we are discussing about this part and after that uh, if we have time left we are going toward the small project also right yeah sir please explain again ah uh, prashad what you are not able to understand basically what we are doing we are finding the ncr that is n factorial divided by n minus r factorial and r factorial right so for that thing i have written this logic and if you will observe i am calculating the factorial here also here also and here also just we are changing the end point right so i have written three point that is my code is bulkier repetitive code difficult to find error right so now we are seeing ki how we can optimize this code right because our end goal is what we have to just find a factorial so guys what i will do i will create a box and i will write some code here and the task the functionality of that code is to find factorial right okay so here i will provide some input to this box and i will get some output from the box basically this we get right this only we get when we use a calculator what we do when we use a calculator device what we do guys we provide some input and we get some output because inside calculator the functionality is written in such a way ki it calculates the addition subtraction operation right yes or no similarly this box is called function okay this box is called function and here what we are doing we are writing a function to achieve a functionality of a factorial 
right everyone why we are doing this part because here you can see we are again and again calculating the factorial of a number right here this point this one this one and this one right so let's try to understand how i can create a function so for function we need uh, the data type okay we need a data type not the data type return type all right return type and after that we have to write the name of the function and after that we have the round bracket inside the round bracket we have to pass arguments okay curly bracket open end close curly bracket and after that i have to write the body of that function okay body of that function and uh, the last point is what here i have to write return keyword and after that here i have to return something or nothing okay something or nothing depending on the use case okay depending on the use case similarly this argument is also optional right this argument is also optional it is dependent on the use case let's try to understand that part let's assume i have to write a function to print my name on the output screen right so what i will do i will create a function print right and after that since i have to just print my name on the output screen what i will do i will write printf here and inside printf i will write abhishek right like this and after that guys can you write in the chat will is there any need to return something here the functionality of uh, this function is to print something on the output screen is there any need to return anything please write in the chat okay is there any need to return anything no correct here i have achieved my functionality that is i have to print something on the output screen i have printed that thing and now i have to return nothing so i will return nothing when i am returning nothing the return type will be void everyone is clear when i am returning nothing the return type will be void here okay so this is a void use case so let's take one more example i have to perform addition okay addition of two number and here you can see guys in the previous example i am not taking any argument here right i am not taking any argument here so let's take the second example what i have to do i have to create a functionality and i have to provide two number that is num1 and num2 right and here i have to perform the functionality of addition and after that i want something on the output screen that is output that is the result i want right so what i will do i will create a function that is add okay the name can be anything here i am writing add after that here i will take two variable okay that is int num1 and int num2 right and after that what i will do i will do the addition of num1 plus num2 and whatever result i will get i will store the result inside a variable that is answer and i will return this answer since here i am returning a integer value okay integer value i have to write the return type as int right if i am returning a float value the return type will be float if i am returning a character value the return type will be character everyone is clear yes or no okay everyone is clear please write in the chat so guys this part this thing is called definition of a function okay this thing is called definition of function here right and now what i have to do i know the entry point of the execution is what this one entry point from where the execution will start right everyone entry point from where the execution will start 
right so from here i have to use this add function so what i will do i will call this function okay what i will do i will call this function and in order to call the function first what i will do i will create a variable that is int a is equal to uh, 2 let's assume int b is equal to 5 okay and now what i have to do i have to add two number that is 2 plus 5 right here yeah 2 plus 5 i have to do so what i will do i will call this method okay or i will call this function and in order to call the function what you have to do you have to write the name of the function that is add here after that here you are saying ki, hey you have to pass two argument so here what you will do you will pass a and you will pass b here right everyone and here you will write semicolon and what uh, what will happen this will give me some output and that output i will store inside a variable that is answer right and after that i will print the answer variable here right like this so let's try to understand how the execution happened here right so if it is clear you guys are saying ki, hey i know this will be the point from where the execution will start right that is from main after that this line will get executed that is int a is equal to 2 4 byte will get allocated inside the computer memory and in that 4 byte 2 will get stored after that we will move to the next line this line will get executed that is int b is equal to 5 right after that i will move to the next line in the next line again what i have i have the assignment operator assignment operator means this part that is right hand side part will get executed right and right hand side part what we are doing we are calling a function right calling a function here so the moment this line will get executed what will happen we will stop here okay my compiler will say ki, hey i will stop here i will first go to this line okay i will first go to this add function right so my compiler is not executing the remaining line right it is stopping here and it is going to this line and here in num1 what we are having we are having two in num2 what we are having we are having the value of b that is 5 here right so inside num1 2 will get stored inside num2 5 will get stored after that i will move to the next line in the next line num1 plus num2 that is 2 plus 5 7 7 will get stored inside answer variable after that what i am doing i am return the moment this return keyword will get executed here what we are doing we are returning something that is 7 we are returning from here so from this point i will come back to the calling function so this part will get replaced with the value that i am returning that is 7 here so 7 will be there and this 7 will get stored in the left hand side part that is inside answer after that i am printing 7 on the output screen so that, like this the execution is happening everyone is clear till this point yes or no or i am going too fast should i explain this point again please write in the chat or it is clear clear sir so i will take one more example and then you will get the uh, then you will get the clear idea right yeah so what i will do uh, let's try to implement uh, this question okay let's try to solve this question and then you will get the clear idea and here you can see how many lines i have i have a uh, total 31 lines right so here you can see how many lines of code i have written like 31 lines of code i have written here right so let's try to understand that part let's try to minimize this code what i will do i know i have to write create a function because uh yeah this question right one minute uh this part here what i am doing n cr that is n factorial n minus r factorial r factorial so basically the end goal is what here also i am calculating the factorial of a number 
here also i am calculating the factorial of a number and here also i am calculating a factorial of a number so what i will do i will create a box right i will create a box here and the functionality of this box is what to calculate factorial of a number to calculate factorial of number here right first i will give the input as n right and i will get some answer that is answer 1 after that i will give the next input as n minus r again i will get answer 2 right again i will give the input as r factorial r so i will get answer 3 so i got answer 1 answer 2 answer 3 i will put the answer inside the formula and i will get the result let's try to understand this thing with the help of a code right so what i will do here this part so first i will define my function that is define a factorial function here right factorial function here so here what i will do i will write int factorial because i want to take a input and i want to give the output right so int factorial here and here i will pass a variable that is int num right and after that i know the logic of how to calculate a factorial of a number that is this logic right so let's copy this logic here and this one right so what i will do i will create a variable that is int fact right and i will initialize the value with one here right and after that yeah yeah after that what i will do this one and let's remove this part and this will be num right and after that here i will return return fact right and uh, let's update this part also that is this one and this one right so what i have done here guys if you will see this point this is the name of the function that is factorial this is the argument i am taking one argument and why i have written int, int here the return type is int because i am returning the output and the output value the data type is what integer here right and here i know how to calculate a factorial of a number right everyone that is 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 that i am able to do with the help of a for loop right everyone till this point everyone is clear yes or no after that what i will write i will write ki hey let's remove this point okay let's remove all this code right there is no need to write this one this one right and here first i will call factorial function and i will say factorial function ki hey factorial function please go and please calculate factorial of n right so for line number 22 what i will do i will say to the factorial function ki hey factorial function this one right Hey factorial function please go and please calculate factorial of n minus r right and in the third line what i will do i will ask my factorial function ki hey factorial function okay please go and please calculate factorial of r i will get the answer i will apply the logic this formula that is factorial of n divided by factorial of nr into r and i will get the result right let's see whether i am getting the correct result or not and after that i will run the code okay i will show how the thing is happening here so again i am getting the same result that is 10 right so you can see this time here you can see this part that is this part okay yeah i have written the logic of a factorial of a number at one place okay at one place and i am reusing the logic again and again here also here also here also so what i am able to do first thing is what if i am having any error in the logic of a factorial of number 
I can easily debug the error. Okay, debug the error. Okay, easily debug the error. Now you can see your main function is less bulkier. Okay, it is a less, uh, you have written less line of code here. Right? The third point you can observe ki you have you are able to achieve modularity. Here you are able to achieve modularity. Right, everyone? After that, uh, any other point you are able to observe? Yeah. So these are the main three points you are able to observe here, right? So let's try to one minute. Yeah. Let's try to run the code and let's try to see what is happening here, right? So what will happen? I know here, right? Okay. This one. So I know this is the main and this is the entry point of the execution, right? So main is the entry point of the execution. I will move to the next line. In the next line, I have created a variable n is equal to 5. At, le at line number 17, I have created a variable that is a r is equal to 3, right? After that, what will happen? I will move to line number 19. At line number 19, right hand side part will get executed. That means the moment you will get here what we are doing, we are calling a function. So from this point, I will go to this function, okay? From this point, I will go to the function and here here inside num inside num what will happen uh, let's create a diagram also then you will get the clear understanding let's assume this is the world okay this is a world of main function okay this is a world of main function and in main function you have two variable that is n and here the value of n is what 5 you have one more variable r Okay, the value of R is what 3. Now you are at line number 19. At line number 19, what you are doing? You are calling a function factorial of n. So what will happen? A function will be called that is factorial of n here, right? Factorial. And inside factorial, what you are passing? You are passing n. That is, you are passing 5. So that 5 will go and get stored inside a num. So here, inside the world of factorial, there is a block and the name of the block is what? Num of 4 byte because here it is of integer. And in that num, what will happen? 5 will get stored, right? After that, you will move to line number 8. At line number 8, what you are doing? You are creating fact is equal to 1. So there will be one more variable and the name of the variable is what? Fact inside factorial world right and it is equal to 1 after that you are calculating the factorial of a number right after calculating the factorial of a number what you will do you are returning factorial right so here some uh, output you are getting let's assume 20 after performing the for loop you are getting 20 here right so from here let's assume you are returning 20 so the moment return keyword will get executed two thing will happen Okay, two things will happen. The first thing is what? First thing is what? You are returning the value. The value will get returned. That is from, from this point, you will jump to this line. Okay, you will go inside the main function at line number 19. Right? That is like this. Yeah. This one. Everyone is clear till this point. So th the first thing is what? You are returning a value. Okay. The second point is what? The moment you have returned the value, this world will get destroyed. Okay. This world will get destroyed. Everyone is getting the point? Yes or no? And after destroying, what will happen? Here. You are doing what? You are returning some value and that value will get stored inside fact of n. So there will be a variable that is fact of n. And inside that, whatever is returned value you are getting, 
that value will get stored here let's assume 20 is getting stored here everyone is getting the point yes or no okay so let's remove this point okay and again let's go to the next line right so the next line is what guys the next line is line number 20 again assignment operator again you are calling a function again you will go to the line number seven inside seven again a new world will get created in that new world there is a variable num and in that variable num this time what you are passing you are passing n minus r right n minus r let's assume this is 120 okay what you are passing you are passing n minus r so the value of n is what 5 5 minus 3 is what 2 so 2 will get stored here inside num after that you are doing some calculation and you are returning the value so what will happen from here you are returning what you are returning 2 so the moment you are returning 2 this 2 will get stored inside nr so there will be a variable there will be a memory block that is the name of the memory block is factorial of nr and in that memory block 2 will get stored right everyone yes or no yeah 2 will get stored after that after that after returning the value so return is doing two per task it is returning a value and after returning a value it is destroying the world so this world will get destroyed right so let's destroy the world and this one right this one now what I, what will happen i will move to the next line that is line number 21 again assignment operator again i will move to the calling function so from line number 21 i will go to this line number 7 again a new world will get created in this world the value of num is what r so the value of i is what 3 so 3 will be here and this will be num okay and this is the new world of factorial again you are performing something after that you are returning fact so the factorial of 3 is what 6 so you are returning what 6 here so this 6 the moment you return keyword you are returning a value that value will get stored inside factorial of r so there will be one more memory block and the name of the memory block is factorial of r and in that 6 will get stored right after that you are destroying the world right you are destroying the function so like this so like this you are now at line number 24 right you are at line number 24 at line number 24 again assignment operator and you will execute the right hand side part right hand side part is what factorial of n divided by factorial of nr into factorial of r right so you know inside factorial of n 120 is stored so 120 will get replaced inside factorial of nr 2 is stored 2 into factorial of i is what 6 so 120 divided by 12 that is 10 you are getting and that 10 will get stored where inside the world of main so here there will be a variable answer and inside answer 10 will get stored after that you are printing answer on the output screen so this 10 will get printed that is this output you are getting is like this now everyone is clear what is this function and how the thing is happening please write in the chat yes or no <clears throat> anyone from the audience not able to understand okay so this is about function okay so understood so guys uh, let me show one more thing and after that we will be ending our session okay so Give me one minute.
okay so let's try to understand one more thing this is a very important concept and i think uh, you should know this concept that's why i am explaining this one uh, this is your program tell me what will be the output okay let's assume you have int main here and inside int main you have a variable int a okay that is 20 after that uh, let's assume you have a if and let's assume a is greater than 5 okay a is greater than 5 after that uh, you have one more variable int b and b is equal to a plus 5 right and after that print f percent d b what will be the output we are getting on the output screen please write in the chat everyone is clear so we have the main function in the main function i have a variable a the value of a is 20 if condition a is greater than 5 int b is equal to a plus 5 this is a plus 5 and after that i am printing b what will be the output so rahul is saying 25 25 okay scroll up scroll up like uh, what to scroll up Undefined B. Oh, Suja is saying undefined B. Undefined B. Anyone still waiting for the correct answer? Yeah. Let's comment this part, right? Undefined B. What is the meaning of undefined B? So basically, we will get an error. Okay, let's see why. Anyone, why we will get an error? Let's see the output. So guys, we are getting a error here, right? This one, this one, this one. And here, what error I am getting? I am getting an error that is B is undeclared, right? B is undeclared. So let's try to understand that part also. So, okay. So here, this we know this is the entry point from where the execution will start entry point right so there is a world of main right this is a world of main and inside the world of main what you are doing you will go to the next line that is int a is equal to 20 so there will be a memory block and in that memory block 20 will get stored in binary format okay for our simplicity we are taking the number in decimal format but it is in binary format after that i will move to the next line in the next line i have a if block this is a curly bracket and this is a block that is if block there is a world of if block inside this if block what we are doing we are creating a variable b okay that is b and inside b what we are doing we are doing a plus 5 the value of a is what 20 20 is what 20 is present outside this block so this block can access uh one minute yeah this block this block can access anything from outside okay everyone this block can access anything from outside so i can access 20 20 plus 5 is what 25 25 is now here 
after that this is a curly bracket okay i will move to the next line and here i am printing the value of b here okay that is inside the main block i am printing the value of b right so inside the main block there is no b you can see there is one variable that is a but there is no b for the main block here for this point this b is hidden right this b is hidden hidden so this is because of the scope scope of a variable okay then you will say ki hey what is the scope of a variable the scope of a variable is a point from where you can access the variable to what point you can access a variable okay everyone so that means uh, here you can access a b from a point it is declared to its just surrounding closing bracket okay so scope or lifetime you can say lifetime you can access a variable from a point from from a point okay from a point it is declared to its just surrounding to its just surrounding closing bracket okay closing bracket so for a you can see this a right everyone yeah this a here so this is a and a is declared where at this point right at this point and according to the definition from a point it is declared so from this point you can access the variable a and till what point you can access to its just surrounding closing bracket so its just surrounding bracket are what for a the just surrounding bracket is this one and this one so you can access the variable a from this point to this point you guys are getting the point yes or no now let's come to b for b b is declared here that is at this point b is declared here and it's just surrounding closing bracket and what this bracket okay this is the just surrounding closing bracket of b so you can access b from this point from the point it is declared to its just surrounding closing bracket to this point and what you are doing you are accessing b outside the bracket that's why you are getting a error that is undefined error on the output screen everyone is clear this is the lifetime of a variable okay lifetime or scope of a variable so you have to remember this point this point okay uh, can you show global variable also yeah you can uh, okay so here let's write a variable above main function okay so int uh, val is equal to 5 so this is a global variable but the concept will remain the same right the concept will remain the same here so if i will try to okay take one example of a global variable okay that is you are saying ki hey int val is equal to 5 you have a main function okay and inside the main function you have int a right that is equal to 2 right and after that you have if a is greater than 0 you have int b is equal to 3 right like this and here so so here what will happen this is a global variable right so this will be the main world okay this will be the main world outside the main world you have a variable val and the value of val is 5 so you can access anything outside of the main world and that thing will be the global okay and you have a block that is if block and here you have a that is equal to 2 and inside if block you have b variable okay that is equal to 3 so inside if block you can access a also 
you can access val also okay inside main block you can access val but you cannot access b right everyone clear or not please write in the chat uh, what is the project of today <laughs> so this is a uh, this is all about the project yeah project is simple what you can do is like guys uh, you can uh, uh, create a number guessing game project you will get uh, the uh, code on the google try to implement try to take the problem statement try to implement that problem statement by your own okay it is a very simple like you have to use a while loop do while loop or fall loop and you have to create a number guessing game right but this is a very important concept and we have the last day so that's why i have uh, discussed that this concept okay so this is all about today's session guys hope you are able to understand a lot from this session if you have any doubt still please write in the chat yeah there are a lot of uh, more thing but uh, yeah again it is like uh, one hour and i have to complete uh, it is not possible for me also right to complete each and everything in the one hour so here now attendance like if you are following the session from the start you know how to mark the attendance about the certificate you will get the certificate after the session click on the certificate link and you will get a option of generating a certificate after that here you can see the trailer of what we are go like what we are learning in this uh, boot camp right but uh, there are a lot more to learn and uh, in order to get the proper understanding of each and everything you can enroll in our java plus gsa placement guarantee program okay so you can open on this link to get the good understanding of what we are doing in this program okay that is we will be having uh, here that is uh, we will be having three month dsa course and there will be 120 plus hour of live learning session by expert developer three mock interview will be conducted by the working professionals and more than 100 plus problem statement you have to solve right in order to build a problem solving skills and after that you have what you have gate uh, okay here you can see you will get the fees refunded if you are not getting placed within 180 day after the program okay so your money will be in safe hand and here you can see the fees that is 5900 rupees and in that fees you are getting the mock interview you are getting uh, the live classes you are getting the doubt session classes you are getting the 100 percent placement guarantee and after that also if you are not getting placed you are getting the money refunded so it is a win-win situation right so here you can see who all got placed from our uh, java interview accelerator program okay so here you can see more than like uh, three of you three of them got 10 lpa package and there is one kiran who got 8 lpa and 5 lpa package right and here you can see what all we are going to learn in this program that is oops concept jdbc sql data structure and algorithm and intellij and after that here you can see who all are going to teach you this program and what browser like uh, you can download the browser to get the good understanding of what we are doing here, right yeah after that here you can uh, see the full stack web development and data science program basically what happens is guys uh, like uh, again the same thing first and second round are important to move to the like first round will be the coding round okay where they will ask you data structure algorithm questions if you are sitting in the interview and after that you will move to the second and third round where they will ask you about the projects right so you must be having some good project in your resume and in your github repository right so that it is very easy for you to represent your project in front of the interviewer and at the same time uh, you know each and everything about the project so you can enroll in our web development program if you want uh, this front end and back end project right in front end we are going to learn about react js and in back end we are going to learn about node js and express js right and we are having git and github and apart from that we are having html css and javascript to build the base and yeah we are having 3 month here it is written two weeks but it will be three month uh, sorry one month uh, data structure algorithm class where you are getting the good understanding of all the data structures right and what all project we are going to make you can see 
here, right? That is Amazon, Instagram, Netflix, IMD, and Nokia.com clone. And there will be some industry level project also that you are doing by yourself. Okay. And we are there to give you the guidance, to give you the mentorship, to give you the doubt session class. And yeah, here you can see the fees of our program and duration of our program, the eligibility criteria. It is BTEC or similar degree. And apart from that, yeah, I have discussed each and everything, right? Apart from that, we have the data science program also. So in the data science program, you can click on the link and here you can see the tech stack we are going to discuss here, right? That is Python, NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, Seaborn. And we are having MySQL, okay, session on Skillet Learn, TensorFlow, Beautiful Soap, Flask, and REST API. W, okay, so these all things you are going to learn in this data science program also, and you can download the browser or you can mail us on support at the rate let's upgrade dot in to get the good understanding of what we are doing in this program, okay, everyone, and what all project we are making here, right? So apart from that, uh, project statement, pro project statement. Okay, you can search Nikhil number guessing game and you will get uh, the project statement from there, right? Try to solve whatever we have learned till now. Try to implement that knowledge by yourself. Okay, you will get the clear understanding of how we can do that program. Yeah. How to download the certificate. Uh, like the moment this session will get over, you will get the certificate link. Okay. Any other question, guys? You have two, three minutes. You can ask anything else if you have any other questions from your side. Anything you're not able to get. Sir, G certificate nahi dikh hai. Sir, why we use? Okay. So basically, uh, here we use get to get uh, the character uh, as input from the user, right? Try to use get take, uh, take a input from the user as character, right? So just try to explore that part. Try to like if I am the beginner and if I don't know about uh, this uh, git ch, what I will do? Yeah, right. So here you can type get right and see. So here you can see it is a it is used to receive a character as input from the user. Still, I am not able to get. What I can do, I can go to this uh, link, any of the link, and here you will get the good understanding of what we have, right? Here you can see, like this, uh, we can take our input from the user, right? That is the character input. Now it is clear. Thank you. Thank you everyone for the session. Thank you for attending the session. Hope you have enjoyed the session. Have a great night. Learn a lot. Practice a lot. Practice is a key. And if you have to excel in this data structure algorithm or you have to build a problem solving skills, first point is practice. The second point is consistent. If you are not solving a problem, try to solve at least one problem a day. Right? Simple problem. Start with a simple problem. Try to solve a lot of more like a 50 to 60 simple problems so that your uh, uh, this uh, your syntax part is clear how to use if else for loop while loop everything is clear then move to the medium level then move to the hard level right and apart from that whenever you are solving a question try to dry run the code dry run will make you understand what you are doing wrong and how you can improve your problem solving skills okay everyone yeah Uh, yeah, like it depends on you, Rasu, like uh, how you want to, to proceed in your uh, uh, this uh, IT field. Okay, like um, sometimes uh, I also use C, okay, because it is both a uh, high level and low level language. Okay, and like most of uh, the op operating system are built in uh, most uh, like operating system and there are a lot of drivers and inbuilt libraries that are built in C. So it is good to learn C language and what you can do is like you can learn the basics of C and after that you can switch to C++ and Java. Okay, because there is a huge market of Java 
and uh, JavaScript and Python, right? Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone.